Volker, when you look at politics in Europe, is there a danger that actually we assume that we've gone over the worst? Sure, there's still a little bit of political uncertainty uh, surrounding Brexit and the UK, but actually, are we underestimating the fact that populism is still boiling in the background? Well, I think it's a mixed bag. I mean, it's very positive that we're moving in France towards a reform stance. That's really key that France reforms its economy, and that's a chance for growing out of the crisis we had. Uh, it's good that in the UK, you know, things are mellowing a bit, that we have a chance for a, a, a situation, a development which is both for good and the UK, good for the UK and the Euro area. And we have trouble spots, Italy especially. I think Italy is still a real danger spot for the Euro. How, how should that impact monetary policy? At what point do we need to actually start thinking about getting out of QE? Otherwise, the unintended consequences are worse than, than what happens if you stick with them. Well, it's key uh, that, uh, you know, multi-policy is, you know, isolated or is protected so it can do its job. So it would be wrong, actually, to have a political situation in Italy and dr have that drive the ECB's decision. Uh, and for that situation, it's pretty simple. If a country with, which has high debt would get into trouble, then, you know, we have a support mechanism. We have the ESM that can always apply for an ESM program and then convince markets that they mean, that they mean business with reforms. So it, it's actually crucial, convince markets. Do you think mm -hmm. markets are likely to freak out when we start talking about tapering? They, they haven't done so in the Fed, but again, it seems that everything is over-communicated. Well, that's why I think one has to have a strategy. And I think the first thing would be, and the ECB should have done this for a while, to talk about how to exit and how the timing could come about. So uh, I think that's what's needed first, and I was recommending that for a while. Uh, just to be clear, I'm not an internal advisor to the ECB. I was a research consultant way back, but I'm speaking for myself, but also yep. for our Council uh, of German Experts. Um, Peter, give me a sense of how you look at uh, currency swings. So we did have a little bit of an appreciation of euro, especially on a trade-weighted basis compared to the dollar. Is this a concern for European countries? Up, we start to see growth and inflation, you know, decline. Um, I think the ECB, though, will be reasonably happy with, with you know, that won't be uncontent with uh, with the euro's appreciation, provided growth and inflation remain, you know, reason, reasonably uh, well supported. Um, and in, the, in this regard, you know, last week's ECB meeting, where they sort of downgraded their uh, inflation expectation, uh, you know, for, for next year to around 1.3 percent, that's a concern. But um, I think that that's mainly due to sort of the uh, the headlines sort of oil oil price changes. Um, the underlying core rate of, of inflation. Is, is expected to remain much the same. So I think they won't be overly sort of uh, concerned really with the euro's appreciation at this stage. If we saw euro dollar, you know, um, illustrate a very aggressive Euro, uh, appreciation, then possibly we might see some verbal intervention. But thus far, the ECB have been pretty quiet about the euro's appreciation, and, yeah, at least since April of this year. Uh, Volker, Peter was saying there that, look, they're not worried too much about your appreciation because it's also uh, kept under control at the moment. How should they view this inflation which is going nowhere? D is it structural or is it the way we also measure inflation? Well, I think it depends how you look at it. I think uh, core inflation has actually been stable for a long time. And uh, the decline we saw in inflation, you know, which triggered the ECB's actions in 2014 was only driven by oil prices. So I think uh, inflation has been very benign. Mm -hmm. And one uh, factor one has to take into account is we have immigration into the hotspots, the growth spots mm -hmm. of the euro area from outside the euro area, from Eastern Europe, from the EU. And that basically, you know, keeps a lid on wage developments mm -hmm. in countries such as Germany where you have massive growth and where we're actually growing above potential.